Hello, welcome to Level Change channel. My name is Claudio Fonseca. I'm a real world pilot, and today we start a series of videos about all the 737 PMDG options. I'm going to explain these options to you, uh, specifically uh, what it changes related to the system, and I will show you the visual changes as well. As uh, we have many options, I've created a document with all the videos. Uh, that you will find in this channel and you can use this document to search for what you are looking for when you are inside the PMDG settings and you cannot find uh, you can just type on the search uh, the name that is written there and you will find so I'm going to show you the document uh, this is the document you will find it on the video description right below and for example uh, we are today uh, talking about uh, the autopilot video so if you click here you are going to be uh, redirected to this video and on this video we are going to talk about MCP type after takeoff GS capture before lock and auto land that's why I'm calling this autopilot video for example uh, another video is the engine video and on that one I'm going to talk about double the rate and takeoff bump so if you wanna uh, watch the video about the engines just click here on the engine video or for example data link and so on and if you want to to search for something just uh, open your search and for example if you search for um, V1 call call out you will see that view one callout is here as well as all the other options that we have uh, on the PMDG. For example, you want to know what is auto probe hit. The auto probe hit will be on the system options video. Okay, so uh, you can always use the same link to download the new version of this document because as I create the videos as I uploaded them to the YouTube I'm going to update this document as well with the hyperlinks for you to go direct to the video so let's go back to our sim and today we are going to talk about the autopilot so when we go inside this airplane and when we go to the CDU, on the CDU we have an option for menu. On the menu, instead of select the flight management computer or data link or anything else, we can go to PMDG setup. Then on PMDG setup, the first option that we have is aircraft. And the first option that we have on aircraft is equipment. When you go to equipment, you have AFDS which stands for Autopilot Flight Director System. So that's what I'm calling this video as Autopilot. All the options that you have for your Autopilot and your Flight Director System. And these four options that we have here, the first one is MCP type. MCP stands for Mode Control Panel, which is basically the Autopilot, which is basically this center part of your panel here where you control the autopilot from the course on the left side to the course on the right side all of these is called mode control panel because you have different modes here to control your autopilot so here we have two options and the options they are based actually in the um, manufacturer's name for this MCP, we have the option for Honeywell and have the option for Collins. Basically, Honeywell was the first one. It was launched with the it was launched with the first um, uh, 737NG and so on. And then later on, uh, Boeing changed the MCP type to Collins. So Collins is the new one, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, the difference. The difference is just the skin. Is just how it's displayed on your uh, computer so if you change to Honeywell you will see this orange one but you have the same buttons you have the same functionality there is only one thing that is uh, lost when you use the Honeywell and I'm going to show you this later on when we talk about Autoland okay so the option are Honeywell which is this one you can clearly see uh, with the orange uh, numbers and the other option is Collins 
which is the new one and you see uh, not the bottoms the the headings itself uh, as white and I personally I like this one uh, I think it fits better with the 737 NG is the newest one anyway so I do recommend you to keep it on callings but it's up to you if you just want to have uh, a different skin for your autopilot that's it just came here and change it okay so the second option that we have is after takeoff and for after takeoff we have two options wings level or heading cell uh, I prefer wings level which is also the latest option that we have for the 737 but first to explain to you I'm going to start with the option heading cell selected what it means actually you are selecting here what is your lateral mode for your takeoff and go around okay uh, for go around it depends uh, at the altitude that you are you can even engage the heading cell uh, straight after takeoff even if you have to, sorry after go around uh, especially if you are high but uh, let's talk about the general takeoff so when we go to heading cell in this case uh, and you start your takeoff and you push toggle switch you are going to see here that the auto throttle mode change from armed to N1 to give you the takeoff thrust. The lateral mode in this case will be heading cell because you just selected heading cell here, okay? And the vertical mode will be toga. That means that your lateral navigation will be giving you guidance to follow the heading that you selected here on your MCP. In this case, heading 317, which is the runway heading, okay? Uh, what is the problem about this uh, selection the problem is that you always have to select your runway heading for takeoff otherwise the lateral mode will give you guidance to turn left or right okay in the beginning when the, the 737 ng was first introduced that was the only option that they had uh, of course this autopilot uh, on the 737 comes from uh, the old generation as anything else on this airplane so they had to keep one lateral mode and the lateral mode would be heading cell okay I'm going to show you the biggest problem about it okay I'm going to add some thrust even though I still have uh, some or all the shocks here but I'm just going to activate the um, takeoff mode and I and then I'm going to reduce the thrust again because I just want you to understand that we are going to see N1 heading cell and toga and then I'm going to disengage the auto throttle and reduce the thrust for you to understand that heading cell and toga they will be there okay so I can now engage my takeoff anyone heading cell toga and at this time I'm going to disengage the auto throttle and reduce the thrust okay so now we are not taking off anymore but uh, the flight directors they are still on the takeoff mode apart from the auto throttle so as you can see uh, we are still on the runway we didn't move okay but I want to show you that we have here heading cell and toga so your vertical guidance will be for takeoff and go around but your lateral guidance will be heading cell it cannot it, it doesn't seem a big problem to have heading cell but if you don't have the runway heading on your MCP for example if you have heading 270 which is to the left you will see that your lateral mode already changes to the left asking you to go left okay of course uh, during takeoff you cannot do much during the takeoff row but as soon as you are airborne uh, if you are following the flight directors you will start a left turn and this turn should not be initiated with the heading cell below 400 feet uh, per uh, Boeing procedures so it's up to you but if you want to use heading cell don't forget to set the runway heading always here okay in this case 317 and then you have your lateral guidance always centered because you will be maintaining during your takeoff 
the runway heading okay so this is the first option that you have the second option and to reset all of these i'm going to take my flight directors off so now when i take my flight directors off and i don't have the autopilot connected all the system is resetted so now i can turn the flight directors on again and you will see that nothing shows now auto throttle one again and we are going to do the second way with wings level which i think is the best option for you because the flight directors now after takeoff they will not give you guidance laterally to follow the heading cell that was selected on the heading it will give you guidance to maintain the wings level that's what you need you want to depart straight ahead until you can start your turn or follow the LNAV okay so in this case I'm going to do the same procedure again I'm going to select 40% we are not going to take off now don't worry I just want you to show that we are going to see now N1 the lateral mode will be blank there will be no heading cell and the vertical mode of course will be again toga okay so here we go N1 and toga now I just disconnected the auto throttle because I don't want to continue but now you can see that the main difference is that we don't have heading cell here we only have toga and then if you change your heading for example to 270 as I did before you will see that the lateral guidance will still be centered because it's not following the heading it's still following uh, the mode which is blank to keep your wings level okay also i prefer this mode because uh, around 400 feet you can engage um, heading cell so in this case if you are following this procedure and you just engage the autopilot without engaging any lateral mode the autopilot will engage with heading cell automatically okay even though it's in wings level okay because this wings level is just for the takeoff once you have your autopilot something will have to will it have to be on the lateral mode so when you start your takeoff like this you can just start your takeoff and if you still want to follow heading 270 after takeoff you just press heading cell and engage your autopilot or you can just engage your autopilot and you will see that the heading cell engages automatically and for that i'm going to show you on a takeoff okay so everything off again auto throttle our v2 was supposed to be note that we didn't change from heading cell so when we go to the fmc 149 was supposed to be our v2 okay i'm not going to engage lnav or vnav i'm going to keep uh, the vertical mode as toga the lateral mode will be blank and once i engage autopilot you will see that heading cell engages automatically on this takeoff okay so now i have to remove my shocks okay shocks are removed and let's go 40 percent table and here we go take off so we have just n1 toga lateral mode is blank because it's aiming for wings level you do not have the autopilot so uh, sorry the fly simulator sound this is on purpose for now for you to follow me only okay so here we rotate here we get off the ground gear up and as you can see the lateral mode is still blank is giving me comments for wings level and now i'm going to engage the autopilot and you can see that it engages automatically with heading cell mcp speed and command at the thrust reduction n1 engages again and the airplane is already on autopilot turning to the heading that you want but you didn't have wrong heading commands before okay 
that's the most important thing during takeoff you can select the heading that you want to follow after takeoff if you have here on the PMDG setup aircraft equipment wings level after takeoff and I do recommend you to keep it like this okay uh, now we are going to accelerate to flap up speed to 20 knots in this case I'm going to retract the flaps as we go towards Hong Kong we just departed Kai Tak Airport okay so we are now going towards the new Hong Kong Airport where I'm going to show you the next two options that we have the glide slope capture before localizer and the auto land okay so let me just finish the configuration here I will keep the engine start switches in continuous as we are going to shoot an approach really soon and here we go I'm going to make some uh, changes to my FMC so you can follow it with me we go to Hong Kong okay and now I'm going to select for example the um, ILS runway 25 left okay and in this case I'm going to select from Fox India 25 left, heading 254, and that's the final. That's what we want now. Okay, so I'm just asking you one minute because I'm going to freeze my position right now okay so we are now position freezed as you can see we are three miles to Fox India 25 left and we are not moving if we go outside you will see that the, our airplane is stationary here in the air because I want to show you the next option that we have the next option that we have on PMDG setup aircraft equipments and the first page is the glide slope capture before localizer that what stand for GS it's glide slope capture before LOC is localizer okay so when you are shooting a uh, ILS approach usually we intercept the localizer and then we can descend on the glide slope because the glide slope will be only valid as we are on the final approach as we are aligned with the runway okay so most of the companies and the new systems now they select glide slope capture before localizer to deny that means you cannot follow the glide slope or the autopilot will not follow the glide slope the flight directors will not give you command to follow the glide slope if you don't have the localizer capture and I'm going to show you this to you so let me take the second FMC here because I just want to make some changes here let's select flaps 30 for our approach and the ILS 25 left is 108.9 and 25 so let's select here 108.9er on the right side here as well 108.9er and on the MCP 254 as the course 254 Two five four. Okay. Now, if we go here on the PFD, you will see that we have the India Foxtrot Lima two five four identified and seven miles, which is what we have here, seven miles to the runway. Okay. That's the ILS that we want. Okay. First of all, I'm going to select. GS capture before lock to allow which I do not recommend just to show you what happened now as you can see the glide slope is below us so let's start our descent to so 7 miles should be something like uh, 2200 so 2200 let's take a level change 
and we are going to descend at this exact same position as you can see the airplane is not moving forward but the airplane is descending okay now it will descend faster you will see I'm going to extend the speed brake just to help and as we go down and we are not moving forward you will see that the glide slope indications is going to start to come up and now I'm going to arm the approach mode APP here so now we have localizer and glide slope arm it note that we allow now the glide slope to be captured before the localizer so if we pass through the glide slope the glide slope will be captured the flight director will give you comments and it, it will follow the glide slope Now the glide slope was supposed to be alive at this point. Let's see. It's getting there. When the glide slope is alive, when we see that starts moving, I'm going to retract my speed brake to have a smoother descent. Here we go. Retracting the speed brake. And as you can see, my glide slope is coming. Okay. As my glide slope is coming, and I go through the glide slope, you will see that the glide slope is captured, but the localizer is not. So these do not happen if you have deny here. So we have allow. So we allow the system to capture the glide slope before localizer. So let's see, let's say now that we fly heading 254. Okay. And now on this heading, I'm going to release my sim. Okay, so now the airplane is flying, let's say on the heading 244. By mistake, I made heading 244 to intercept my final because I was getting close to the final. Okay, but as you can see, we are now flying towards the terrain because we are not aligned with the runway, but we are following the glide scope. And if we don't do anything, we are going to hit the terrain and we are not going to reach the runway. So in this case, Toga, Fly Director. MCP, out to the quieting again. Just to get out of this. You see the position that you put your aircraft in if you do not follow the procedures that you are supposed to follow. Okay, so now I'm just going to select here 3500. I'm going to engage my autopilot and the same heading cell, it's okay. So as we are climbing above these mountains now, I'm going to make a change and I'm going to select uh, my position again. Just give me one minute. I'm going to select in this case again to 25 left on the left vectors.
and yeah here you go we are going to see a couple of weird things here that's because I'm positioning the airplane again for this approach as you can see here we have again Hong Kong runway 25 left Their plane is being set up for this approach again. And what we are going to do now? We are going to go to PMDG setup, aircraft equipment. At this time, we are going to deny the glide slope capture before localizer. So, as you can see now, we are below in this case, it's not a big deal. Okay, I'm going to go up again. Let's say four, uh, 5,000 feet. Meanwhile, I'm going to select the same position, Fox India 25 left, heading 254. So we now have the extended center light line there on our MCP or, or sorry on our ND and we are climbing again we are climbing at the same position and we have the airport down there okay so we are just going up now as you can see the glide slope is already alive I will leave it be a little bit below let's say 4200 and even go to 4500 with vertical speed so I'm putting more or less the same position we had it before so we are still not on the localizer, we are not on the glide slope, but one thing that I'm going to do again is to arm the approach. Once again, localizer and glide slope, they are armed. You will see now that as I descend, for example, to 3500, I'm going to go through the glide slope as we did it on the first approach. Once again, localizer and glide slope is there just for you to make it very clear that glide slope will be there, armed. It is armed. So the glide slope is coming. But the airplane will not follow the glide slope. You see, now we are reaching the glide slope. In the previous one, the airplane captured the glide slope and started the descent. You see, now at this time it didn't. Because if you deny the glide slope capture before localizer, first you have to have localizer for the glide slope to be captured and followed. And the main reason why we want this is because, like in the previous approach, I start to follow the glide slope without being in the final, so I was going towards the mountain. The previous plane, as well, didn't have this option. To deny the glide slope capture before localizer as soon as you press the approach button and you have a valid glide slope indication it was going to follow so in the previous planes where you don't have this option or on the ng when you have this option selected to allow instead of arming the approach you have first to arm localizer only so then you are going to see on your PFD for lock, not glide slope armed. Okay, so if you have an airplane like this, 
that allows you to capture the glide slope. So first you have to select Vorlock. First you select Vorlock. And once localizer is captured, then you can select approach mode. So what Boeing did, use the technology now to tell the flight director system and the autopilot, do not follow the glide slope before localizer. And then on this case, they allow now the pilots to select straight and direct the approach mode. So the approach mode will have for lock capture, glide slope capture, and you will not be following the glide slope before localizer. So I really recommend you to keep this on deny. Okay, so you do not follow the glide slope before you are established on the final approach. Okay. So this concludes the third part of the video about glide slope capture before localizer. But I still have the last one to show you. So I'm going to freeze the simulator position again. We are still position freeze and we are going to talk about auto land. Auto land we have two options fail passive and fail operational. So that's why you have here fail pass which means fail passive and fail op which means fail operational. What's the main difference between those two? Uh, the fail operational includes some extra controls for the autopilot, some extra guidance from the ESFD and all of this uh, will give the option for the airplane not only to land but to track the center line after landing. So what the airplane will do in this case if you have an auto land and you have a fail operational airplane. The airplane is going to follow an ILS, is going to do the flare and is going to follow the center line after landing, uh, which we call roll out mode. OK, so the main difference for you is that if you have fail operational, you will have roll out mode as a valid lateral mode for your approach. Of course, uh, instead of single channel and command that you have in the fail passive, you will also have the option to see here LAN 2 or LAN 3. And what you really want to see is LAN 3 saying that all the systems, they are working and you have three autopilots connected, three different sources for your uh, glide slope, your localizer and your autopilot and the airplane is capable of performing an auto land, even if you have uh, some sort of failure close to the ground. OK, of course, if you are higher from the ground, then you deal with the problem as uh, any on the any other normal approach. OK, the main difference as well, or not the main difference, but something that you are going to see if you select uh, fail operational. And that's the only way you can see here on this airplane uh, that you can follow a uh, fail operational uh, approach is that here on the MFD, apart from the engine and system, you have also another button here called cancel and recall. This is to cancel and recall the figures that you can have related to your um, autopilot and approach system that will prevent you uh, from flying uh, this approach as fail operational and having the airplane following the runway center line after landing. So how do you know if this airplane is fail operational or not? You will see the C slash R button here on the MFD. OK. So not only engine, not only system, but you also have. The cancel and recall button. OK, so when you see cancel or recall button there, that means your airplane is fail operational. In real life, uh, the companies, they put a tag here saying CAT2 only or CAT3A or CAT3B or CAT1 only or no LVO or whatever is the capability of that airplane, okay? So in this case, in the PMDG, you have to look for this button. So if you have this button, you are fail 
operational. Another thing, if uh, let's go back to fail passive, on the fail passive, you can select Honeywell, okay? But if you select fail operational, the PMDG already changes you to callings, okay? So uh, the fail operational auto land mode is only available with the callings MCP with the callings autopilot, okay? This autopilot, the white one. So if you change it to Honeywell after selecting the fail operational, okay? It changes to the Honeywell, but you have a message, fail operational auto land is disabled and you are reverted back to the fail passive okay so if you change from callings to honeywell it will change you from fail operational to fail passive if you were there and if you change from fail passive to fail operational even though you had honeywell it changes you to the calling callings autopilot okay that's the main difference so now let's shoot this approach I am a little bit fast, so I'm going to extend in this case flaps one, then I'm going to reduce to flaps one speed. We can descend to 3000 here. And now I'm going to release this plane to fly, and I'm going to select the approach mode. Okay, so we have the throttle armed. Heading cell with warlock armed, MCP with glide slope armed. Note, we are on the glide slope, the airplane is not following because we have it to deny only when we have localizer. So in this case, I'm going to extend flaps to 5. I'm going to reduce the speed to 5. And now we are getting closer to the final. Now we have localized it and then it can follow the glide slope. Okay, so the most important thing here as we set the missed approach for 5000 is that you have warlock glide slope and initially is single channel. Once we cross 1005 feet radio altimeter, the glide slope and the localizer they will flash because it was just tested by the system as the tie breakers they separate and you will have single channel here changing to land 3 okay so here down flap 15 speed break armed engine start switch was supposed to be in continuous all fine, all set, approach to 15. And I'm going to select now already our landing flaps, flaps 30. Because I want you to concentrate, and this heading is 254, that at 1500 radio altimeter, not 1500 altitude, 1500 height, we are almost there. A couple of things happen to this system. And you know that it's been happening because you're going to see glide slope and localizer flashing. So 1500. It flashes. It did the system. Test. Come on. Flashes. Ah, oh, I forgot to select the second autopilot. My mistake. We still have the option now. It flashed. And you will have land tree with rollout armed and flare armed. If you were not fail operational, at this time, instead of land tree, you are going to see CMD command. You were going to see the flare armed, but you were not going to see the rollout mode, okay? So the rollout mode is what will keep you on the center line after landing. If you do not have this autopilot mode available, the rollout, after landing, after automatic landing, the pilot needs to control the center line using the rudder, okay? Of course, there are more related to fail operational and fail passive, but this is uh, what you are going to see, this is what is important for you 
uh, during this approach, okay? I'm sorry I didn't press the second autopilot before for this uh, automatic landing. That's why you didn't see that at 1,500, the localizing and glide slope um, blinking there. But as soon as I engaged the second one, you were able to see it. Okay, so the airplane keep following the localizing and glide slope. At 50 feet, the glide slope will change from to flare, so that means the airplane will start to flaring. At 27 feet, MCP speed will go to retard, so flare, retard, and at 2 feet, we are going to have rollout mode, and the airplane is now capable of keeping the center line, and it will maintain you down the runway. The slight difference that we have here between our airplane and the center line is the difference between uh, the localizer antenna and the runway here on the simulator, okay? So this is uh, the simulator itself, but as you can see, most of the airports, it is aligned enough. What means is, in the real life, the runway is slightly to the left, okay? Because the airplane followed the localizer, as you can see here, is completely centered on the localizer. You have the rollout guidance here at the bottom, okay? So this is the main difference for a fail operational one. Once again, to know you have this button, cancel and recall, and once you have two autopilots for your ILS approach at 1,500 feet, you have land 3 instead of command, or land 2 if you have a problem, you will have the flare armed and the rollout armed as well. If it's just fail passive, the rollout mode is not available. Of course, it's not changing here now because it's just uh, uh, the approach is already done. Okay? So, I do use fail passive for the 737 because the planes, the 737 that I used to fly, we were not certified CAT uh, 3 and the airplanes, they were all fail passive. So that's how I like to fly. But if you want uh, to shoot a CAT 3B in Europe or a CAT 3 in general in the United States, for example, you need to have fail operational. So it's up to you. I keep fail passive. If I'm going to do a flight and I want to show you something related to uh, a CAT 3B in Europe or a CAT 3 in the United States, then I come here and I change uh, the airplane configuration. Okay? Uh, guys, once again, Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you didn't, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, share this video with your friends if you learn uh, something, and stay tuned for all the explanation for the 737 options with the PMDG. Thank you once again. See you. Bye-bye.